Yeah, for my sake. Again, sorry about that. Can't wait to talk about the five-story mm-hmm. orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Remind me, remind me when we get to there. <laughs> All right, so this time, unlike previous times, um, you decided for yourselves when to begin this next adventure. There was no... Because for once, there's no actual time crunch. The forces of Ucanthus have made their final move. You have thwarted them. And so now um, you're out among the plains seeking allies that could help you uh, challenge this thing that goes beyond the power of gods. Now, Harvey's best idea for uh, what could possibly have that kind of power was the Lady of Pain. In the, uh, the City of Doors, also known as the Cage, also known as Sigil or Sigil, depending, depending on who you get to say the word. <laughs> Uh, so the group just sort of dicked around in Sigil for a bit. Uh, <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> learned, learned a bit about it, um, talked with a few of lo- the locals, and then a Dabas arrived at their inn, and the Dabas are known to be the, uh, the sort of the hands and eyes and ears of the lady. And so it's brought you a message directly from her, which is to seek out her siblings among the plains, one of whom is the heart of of Mechanus in the heights of Mount Celestia at the center. What the world just happened? I don't know. Something came from Kalon's mic, and it was terrifying. You know, controllers should be set off rather than vibrate. <laughs> that wasn't a controller. Sorry about that. My mic just does that every once in a while. It, usually, it has never happened. Uh, okay, I am speaking. It has never happened during a, one of these streams, so I thought it was only when I'm streaming video games, but apparently not. I am Sometimes it I'm, turns into a very loud ice maker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I don't know what I don't know what causes that. Like, I literally have no idea. I'll admit that's the first for me. I apologize. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think I've ever come across that one before. Yeah, yeah like, it only <laughs> happens when OBS is up and streaming. I have no idea what's going on with it. Alright, but, um... As I was saying, the heart of Limbo, the heights of Mount Celestia, the very center of Limbo, and the very the bottommost layer of the abyss are the places that you are directed to go, with the quiet recommendation that the first place be Mechanus. And as it turned out, this lined up perfectly with the... Uh, with the Madron's um, timetable. Because they uh, immediately began the next Madron march, in which the Madrons uh, basically weave across the Great Wheel, going to every outer plane at least once, and the, uh, the Outlands multiple times, and just make a big circuit of the whole thing. And so far you visited Arcadia, the land of being a little too perfect for comfort. Uh, Mount Celestia, where you uh, weren't able to appreciate too much about it, because as it turns out, the uh, Madrons had a treaty to march along the established roads of a place called um, Heart's Faith. Except the, the map is outdated and the roads don't exist anymore and so they march straight through the buildings instead including a five-story orphanage yeah the five-story orphanage 
Yeah, almost. There's a five-story orphanage in what is equates to heaven. And these guys just steamrolled through it. Okay. Yeah. Attempted yeah, they to. did. Attempted to. No, they they did. Yeah, okay, yeah. That building okay. went down. You saved the orphans, but that building went down. Uh, I think the only building we saved that they were dead set on just going through was the library, and that's because it's a, a holding place of knowledge. And only because this is specifically a a uh, knowledge gathering mission. Like just just for the record, if they were on a different mission, like um, a raid of some sort, they would not have stopped, or that argument would not have worked on them. Because that's how Madrons work. But in any event, the uh, next encounter began right back in the Outlands. Because uh, the path they take is basically to cross into the Outlands, go to the next uh, gate town over, enter through the gate into the uh, plane beyond it, cross from one, pla from one outer plane to the other, <clears throat> then take the gate town back to the Outlands, go to the next gate town, and so on and so on. So like, if it helps you, just imagine like a sewing needle going between two pieces of cloth. But in a circle. All right, so you with me so, so far? Yeah. Yep. All right, so things went a little strange after that because uh, you guys met a... Uh... Paladin? Yes, a paladin of the Order of the Plains Militant, or something along those lines. And, uh... According to him, there was strong evidence that a group of vile ne'er-do-wells wanted to um, attack the Madron March in order to capture Madrons for some nefarious purpose. And that's basically how he puts it, by the way. And so he went and hired basically everybody who could hold a sword or a club and uh, had them escort the Madrons from the... Uh, Mount Celestia Gate Town to the one that goes into Bytopia. Now that does seem to have helped, but at the same time, it's um, well. At the same time, they've managed to uh, grab some of the Madrams during the march, and uh, you encountered one of the larger raiding parties, along with the knight himself. And uh, so he, he still needed to stay behind in order to manage the rest of the uh, escort of the march. But he ordered you guys to follow the survivors of the raid back to their base. You did so using a survival check for once. Wow. <laughs> yeah, survival actually came in handy. Who fucking knew? <laughs> And ended up in a place that, although you don't know the name, I am just going to call the Rendering Works. And with that being said, it's time to post the music. Which is uh, picking up where we left off last week, let's say. Ah. Ah, I see. <laughs> Alrighty, I did... I did hear about this as well, so... Alright. So, the first thing to do is, um... You're all a little exhausted from your fight. And so, um... You're going to take a... You determine that you will take a short rest, but, uh... Continue on to attack or infiltrate the, uh, rendering works... While it's still nighttime since that's when the attack occurred, and in any event, you will get a short rest. Okay. Which means you get your key points back. If you took any damage, you can roll hit dice to replenish it. I think we got hit for maybe nine total hit points worth of damage. 
most of that yeah. lily? Yeah. It was a fighting retreat. I don't even think I got attacked that entire time. But, uh, yeah. With that in mind, I will actually, um... Move you back to the battle map so you can adjust your pogs uh, appropriately. Uh, let's see, I get a magic back because the short rest, but aside from that. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, it, it took me a while to find us again. <laughs> You're a bit tucked away in the bottom right corner. Okay, so I see I got a bunch of nines. Yeah. Oh shit, yeah, you do! <laughs> Alright, and uh, yeah, if you've taken any damage, go ahead and roll your hit dice to get it back without having to spend any resources. Well, I got the key back, so I can put that back up. Were any spells used last time? Uh, I think I had to use one level one spell, or something no, like that. Uh, spiritual weapon. Yeah, yeah, spiritual weapon. Oh, breath level two. Okay. Oh, either way. Is uh, Aurelia, are you going to do anything about your hit points? Did Aurelia lose hit points? Yeah, you have a bit yeah, you, of bar missing. You appear to be 20 down. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I don't see your numbers, I... but I can see the bar. Oh, I am 20 down. Okay, well, I mean, I guess I'll drink a potion or whatever. Uh, you can spend hit healing dice. Oh, right. Healing dice, right. Yes. Oh, yeah. Fuck. You guys also all get bonus healing dice. Don't forget that. Oh, yeah. Song of Healing for being a bard. Yeah. Uh, let me... How was that powered up recently? Yeah. I, it, like, never comes up. Um... Yeah, we don't really do a lot of extended... Uh, Sorry, let me find it. Day. It's on my list of class features that literally extends off of the page on the thing <laughs> I keep on. Um, Song of Rest. At 13th level, you have a D10 to add to everybody. Yeah. Okay. Well, roll the extra D10 then. Oh. <laughs> well, Grunash is overhealed. Okay. Yeah, I back up the max. Um, so how does using hit dice work again? You just choose how many you want to roll? Or... Yeah. Yeah, and you, then... you can roll them one at a time as well. I think oh, you okay. also add your constitution score. And yes, bonus. it is plus constitution per okay, die. Well, I'll do my Ooh. bonus ones from my own song, I guess. Oh, no. <laughs> my song was more effective on uh, Grenache than on myself, I suppose. Grenache was much more impressed by your song than you were. <laughs> yeah, well... You are your own harshest critic. Unless Lily rolls a one. Why can't I edit my own HP? This is weird. Hmm. Yeah, literally won't let me edit my own HP. <laughs> I can edit other stuff about my pog, but not my HP. Okay, try yeah. now. Oh, yeah, I can do it now. Okay. I can't see the uh, numbers still. Like, I can see everybody else's, like, actual numbers. At least PC-wise. Uh, so, eight. Uh, do another one. And I mean, what the hell? I'm not like I'm really likely to be conserving this or anything, so. Yeah. Not at the moment. Oh, oops. <laughs> oh, yes, and. 
<laughs> okay, well. Grenache, as you may have noticed already, um, out of the companion pool, only, um, only Lorem has volunteered to go with you on this particular adventure. Makes sense. If I recall correctly, he just completely swiped his desk clean and is like, oh, look at that, I don't have any work to do. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right for him. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're going on an adventure? Yeah, fuck this. <laughs> no, it's more like you're going on... Let's go. More like you're going on planner expeditions that gives my knowledge? Let's go. <laughs> you're going beyond the world? Okay, let's go. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, I'm already packed, let's go. Uh, Torpo, are you gonna spend any uh, healing dice? Uh, yeah, sorry, I was busy trying to get uh, something to work to the point where I had to go in and delete the registry key to make it function. Oh, okay. Oh something about fucking Adobe Reader just shat the fucking bed. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, but, um,. Yeah, unfortunately, Harvey could not join you this time because in the plains there are things called Githyanki and Githzerai who will A, figure him out despite his disguise, and B, attack him on sight. And probably kill him. Ah, he doesn't come back. Depends on who he encounters, but... It's more, more you just to the point, in the ass. Yeah, more to the point, it's not the kind... You, you guys don't need that kind of heat. No. Why were you traveling with a mind flayer? What's a mind flayer? What? The... Oh, you mean our good buddy who was all oh, so weird? We thought he was an elf. We're just idiots. So I hate that the song that's playing in the soundtrack right now <laughs> just reminds me of the fucking outtakes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I'll, I'll so I, I can roll them separately, right? Yeah. Yeah, individually, one at a yeah. time. And don't forget the uh, bard die first. Yep. And that's just a flat pl uh, d10? That's just a flat d10, yeah. Yeah, although you will need to uh, spend at least one uh, yeah. hit I die mean, in order to get that bard dice. I mean, I was planning on, but because it's the bard dice aren't going to fill me up anyway. I'm yeah, needy. just making it clear. <laughs> oh, okay, I it turns out, turns out that Aurelia isn't the harshest critic of her own music. You know what? This isn't surprising. No, the problem is that Lily just refuses to listen to it. <laughs> it's probably a song about, you know, like, a, a noble or something, and Lily just, you know, plugs her ears up. It's, it's too popular for Lily's tastes. She prefers more underground stuff. <laughs> she prefers literally, literally underground. Music, like music, music composed by deep gnomes. Yeah, like the drow? <laughs> the drow were, is totally her kind of music. Nah, you should you should see the shit coming out of Goblin Slums is all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Fuck me! <laughs> uh, Improving. Ah, but by how much? So One, two, three. Five. Oh. Oh. We can spend another one. Ugh. Yeah, you, uh, you guys have ton of the tons of those things at this point. Yeah, it's it's true. I, I it's true. I'll fucking burn another. This is get. This is ridiculous. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> You know, let's burn another. If I roll exactly the same, it'll be perfect. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> I'm just gonna use up another one and get to full. Because why not, honestly? Fucking yeah. one over, eat me! <laughs> <laughs> and clearly the dice did that just to spite you. No shit! Look at that, All everybody's right. full again. So... With that uh, taken care of, um, looking at this building ahead of you, uh, I will give you an opportunity to uh, roll history to try and gauge what uh, what kind of building it is. Oh boy, right. history! <clears throat> Hell yeah, skill. I'm great at history. Learn some clues about it. Oh. That's a building. Just absolutely crush it. Holy <laughs> shit! 
The wind speaks to Grenache, what can I say? <laughs> Oh no, it smells you'd, foul. You'd, oh, think that, you'd think that the wind would speak to Aurelia, but here we are. I mean, I come back and suddenly I'm doing the rolls. I don't know what's going on. Hmm. Oh, Grenache also worships a god, god of wind, among others. Oh, true. So. Anyway, uh, yeah, between you and Aurelia, you quickly uh, deduce that this building was not always the... Uh, the sort of bandit haven that it currently is. There's a uh, a tower towards the front of the building that looks like it's being currently being used as a watchtower, but looks like it previously might have hold, held some sort of bell to uh, gather people to it. However, the rest of the building does not appear to have any sort of um, divine purpose. So with that in mind, you you figure out that this is probably used to be a school back when this part of the Outlands was more populated. But uh, it seems like the front area must have been just sort of torn out based on the kind of debris you're seeing out on the steps in front of it. Just piles of stones that look like they could have been walls and uh, ceilings at some point that have clearly been moved away from the building and instead of just falling off the side of it. And for that matter, you also notice that um, the riders coming and going are going around the front entrance towards the back and leaving the same way. There are a few people coming th through the front door, but those appear to be messengers who are on foot instead. So there are at least two entrances to this building. And the, uh, the watchtower, the makeshift watchtower, looks like it's mostly uh, hanging over the front entrance. Well, at this point you have the skills and spells you would need to go in through either entrance. The back one might be a little less troublesome if you decide to take that path. Yeah, and if, it, if it's riders that we're dealing with, it's probably a lot of heavy footprints to follow. So. Oh yeah, that, that was how you found this place in the to begin with. But there are still like a few hundred yards between you and the building that you would need to cross. You managed to get up to where you are because the terrain here is very rocky. And so you're able to get fairly close without being spotted. Although you did have to leave your horses behind. Understandable. So, with that knowledge gained, what is your plan of attack? Let's go in the I back way. To... Yeah. I'm in agreement with that. Because, like, guaranteed... The front is probably more trapped, and the only reason that messengers are going in there is because they know where the traps are. Yeah, also we can go invisible. Yeah, that too. I actually have regular invisibility again. I think I, I'm pretty sure I took it, but that was one of my spells. I never got rid of it. Yeah, well, I did thinking I'll have greater invisibility. I'll never need regular invisibility ever again. Oh. Fool. Fool that I am. You fool! Alright, um, casting at a fifth level, that's, uh, two, three, four. Yeah, you could get one person with one casting as a warlock. Or you could get the whole party with one casting, I mean. I mean, sure. If, uh, that, that'll actually be better for everybody, because my spell slots regenerate, nobody else's does, so... We're all invisible now. Hooray. All right. Yay. Just to hear clapping coming from where Lily was. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Towards the back then. Yeah. Okay. 
So with that in mind, I would like you all to make a stealth roll with advantage. This will be a group check. Oh, stealth. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know how Lily's going to handle that. (laughs) Uh, By mine, stealth with advantage. Hi, it is me lifting up the fucking curve with my powerful. Wow, muscle. I still, I still did the worst out of it, all of us, and that's still only <clears throat> eighteen. And I didn't even get advantage. <laughs> oh, well, and oh, that's right, because your thing gives you disadvantage. Well, my medium armor gives me disadvantage. Okay, that too. On this specifically, yes. All right, so. uh... You successfully go around the side of the building without being detected. You wait for a moment where it doesn't seem like anyone's coming or going, and you uh, sneak right up to the back door, which turns out to be quite large, and opens out into a... uh, uh, opens up into a... what has at least become a stable. And let me just double check here. All right, so as you enter the stable, you see two guards posted on the door that leads further into the building. You gather that they are here not just to keep watch, but also to uh, care for any mounts brought in by the riders. And for that matter, you see a fair number of mounts just uh, uh, set into the various, um, what are they called in stables? Not sure. Stalls? Stalls. Yeah, you see a fair number of horses in stalls lining the sides of the building, along with a wagon. That looks uh, slightly worn out, but also familiar. Um, actually, a couple more next to it. So that would that would mean that the the party you encountered is not the only large raiding party they have. But uh, aside from that, you could roll. Um, well, let's say perception or animal handling, just to gain a little bit more knowledge. Yes. Give me my perception checks. Is this for sight based on sight, or? Um. I I ask because if I if it's based on sight, then I get advantage. <clears throat> I'd say it's based on a little more than just sight. So. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, that is a lie. That is a twenty-two. Two. Yeah. Twenty-two. All right. I should probably so, roll some. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we got enough. Uh, uh, oh, that's incorrect. That would be a twenty. Well, it obviously beats mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're able to deduce as you quietly make your way into the stable that while these people may be evil, they treat their horses like kings. <laughs> there is plenty of feed. It's all. Um, it all smells sweet and fresh. There are brushes up on the walls. There are uh, proper tackle lined up. Everything is very neat and clean and well cared for, including the horses themselves. Look, they know who butters their toast. Yeah. All right. But as for the guards, what are you going to do about them? Uh, so here's the thing. Regular invisibility wears off when we attack something. So I was thinking... Or cast a spell. Or cast a spell. So what I was thinking was we unlock these stall- these stalls and just put a slap to the ho- to a horse's ass be considered an attack. Because I yes. was thinking... Okay, damn it. Because I was hoping that we could like slap the horse's well, ass and then just, just have them bolt. spook him. Yeah. How, how, hmm, you could just spook them. 
you don't yeah, need you to slap the horse to spook it. Yeah, you just show it ants and then it'll die. Perfect. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we can just open up the stalls and make a quick loud noise to spook yeah. the horses. Yeah. All right, but uh, one of you will have to roll stealth against the uh, perception of both of these guys, and just to make it fair, I'm gonna, you know, roll for them. Uh, Not just... Okay. Here, here's uh, my question: Do you, do you want to do with... it because yours is higher? Or do you want me to do it because they would have dis? Actually, wouldn't they have disadvantage against perceiving us anyway, since we're invisible? Yeah. Then you go ahead and do it. You go ahead and do it. Yeah. So should I roll with advantage, Robin? Yeah. Okay, nope. Just wanted to be sure. You're still invisible. <laughs> and doing quite well. <laughs> Look, there's some. There's one thing I'm fucking. Well, there's a lot of things I'm good at, but <laughs> there's one thing I'm good at. <laughs> That's being a slippery son of a bitch. All right. Well, both of them rolled sevens, so. I somehow that does think all the bonuses they have does not equal 35. Yeah, and by the way, these guys are noticeably less, um, well, they are definitely not knights, like the guys on the horses were. These guys seem to be lower ranked with poorer equipment. There's a reason that they got left back here stuck uh, on babysitting duty. Behold the squires. Hmm. All right, so, uh... What kind of a loud noise are you guys going to be making? Like, how how is that going to work exactly? That uh, is the question. <laughs> what could we knock over? Yeah, what's in here that we can knock over? Well, there's uh, the tackle lined up uh, nice and tidy. Uh, there are rows of saddles and other harness. Uh, a few uh, saddle blankets as well. Maybe the tackle? That would make a big noise. Yeah, yeah, but, we can. but just falling on the ground wouldn't be enough to spook a horse. You would need to just slam it against, like, the stall walls. Or, or we could light a fire. Oh, it's fire, fire with you. Is that a problem? Sometimes, yes. I'll find a bucket and just throw it like a frisbee. Okay, great. Ash, just slam the tackle in. Yeah. Just fucking <laughs> go to town on that shit. I think you're the strongest one here, which is sad because your strength is only 12. Okay, 14. That's not. Four okay, 14. I thought it was 12 for whatever reason. That's fairly good then. Alright, so. What's your goal exactly? To pick up a random bucket and, uh, what, throw it at one of the guards, maybe, to make a loud noise? Ah! Take it more for that, an inanimate object. Anything that could also make a loud noise, preferably. I mean, if, it's, if we're going with my idea, at least. All right, but um, so how about you roll animal handling then? Oh no! To, to try and make the kind of noise that would spook an animal. Oh no! Oh. Well, I actually think that Grenache is actually fairly good at animal handling. That's no, the, the problem is the roll. Hmm? Oh. Hmm. I mean, I uh, could. Look, all I'm saying is, last time you tried animal handling, it went very well. <laughs> the, only one, the only way to go from here is up. 
true. Unless you stay on the level, which... Shall I hit the button then? Yes, hit that button. Slam a jam that what? button. Yeah! It's not bad. No, it's good even. All right, the uh, guards look curiously at what could have possibly made a uh, bucket fly across the uh, stable, but by the time they think to start looking is when the horses start bolting and uh, smashing the stalls and otherwise need calming down and chasing after. Your horses My quiet suck. By quietly staying out of the way, you are able to uh, wait for the two guards to leave their posts, enter through the back door, and move on into the chamber beyond, which is a hallway. The, hall the, the hallway stretches straight before you towards a large chamber that you can't quite see from the current distance you're at, but there are six doors, three on each side. Um, that line the hallway before it gets to that opening. Check doors, I guess. Hell yeah, I love checking doors! Alright, um... Left side doors, right side doors. Going to do any sort of searches or listening before... Yeah, let's listen. Investigations. Uh, this is a check first. Yeah. It Investigation, you say? Since this is listening, I don't get advantage on the perception chip. Damn it. That's <laughs> a lie. That is a 22. Still. Uh, it would also be investigation. Wait, investigation or perception? Either or. Investigation. I'm allowing either one. Oh, okay. Okay, well. So I'm slightly better at that. Right, uh, E and F. All right, I... Uh, Y'all did fairly well, but this is Lily's... Uh, bread and butter. Understandably. Shit's my jam. Bread, butter, and jam. Delicious. All right. So, uh, yeah, between looking through keyholes, uh, watching light patterns along door jams, and just listening at the door itself, you are able to figure out that all three of the doors on the left open into barracks, many of which are currently inhabited. Some guards are asleep some are just sitting around barrels and uh candles playing card games and uh it looks just from the keyhole glances you get it, it appears to be that uh some of them look like they might be the knights and some of them might be the lower ranked guards but in both cases they are here to rest and so their armor is uh, sat next to their beds rather than, you know, on them. Because only crazy people sleep in plate mail. That or you get an enchanted so that way it's comfortable no matter what position you're in. Yeah, but that does even then it has to be a special kind of enchantment specifically to do that. Yeah. As for the others, uh, the ones on the right-hand doors are full of uh, storage boxes. It appears, from what you can see and smell, to be a uh, strange mixture of items. You're not entirely certain what could be in all of them, but um, they it does seem to be piled up in a way that none of it is probably too valuable. Or if it is valuable, then they aren't treating it as such. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Just this is my plate mail from wearing around the house. <laughs> uh, okay, well, seems to be nothing important here, so I take it we just move on. Yeah, I mean, these guys. It's gonna take these guys like five minutes to put on plate mail if if uh, shit goes down. So unlikely they'll ever they'll get to us in time if shit goes down. So. Oh, we could rummage through the storeroom super quick, see if there's anything interesting. That that is true. I'm just I'm just saying. All right. So, are you proceeding forward into the uh, main chamber beyond the hallway, or are you I... going to investigate the storage rooms a bit more? I like Man, the I'm idea. Down of... for... I'm I'm down for investigating the storage rooms. Yeah, it'll be it'll be quick. Same thing I'm good at, it's investigating. Yeah. Thanks. So I guess we'll be keeping watch. It sounds good to me. Alrighty. Okay. Alright. Um So you open the doors and you find that they are unlocked and untrapped. Which, you know, further drives home that whatever's in here isn't too valuable. And you find a variety of crates and vials and jars. Like, there are what you would expect to find in a storehouse for a bunch of bandit raiders. So, spare weapons, spare armor, uh, food supplies, tools, utensils. But also a bunch of strange chemicals that you can't quite identify what they could be. Stoppered in vials and uh, tucked away in jars. There is just this foul mixed odor coming from the pile of them that looks to be at this point um, stocked up for quite a lot of uh, work and maybe about a fifth of it has been taken down based on uh, how people have been taking out the chemicals in this uh, chamber. There are also a lot of uh, surgical implements by which I mean saws, razor-sharp knives, and uh, other such things that you would only see at uh, your local surgeon or possibly a dentist. So this is probably shit for picking apart and preserving the Modrons. Yeah, probably. Good. This is going to be disgusting. Yeah. I hate it. All right. So on to the main chamber. Yeah, yeah. let's go there. Oh, there's a bit of flavor text for this one. Oh, boy. Until now, you've never heard the sound of Madrons screaming in mortal terror. You've never smelled Madron vitals exposed to open air, giving off a fetid and metallic reek. Overpowering even that odor is the acrid stench of the chemicals, filling the numerous vats, and the smell of molten metal rising from small uh, makeshift forges. The floor under your feet crunches with tiny metal filings, uh, miscellaneous springs, gears, and also tiny black stains that you suspect is Madron blood. Especially because it is pooling underneath the chains on which hang various Madrons in uh, various states of disassembly. 
Metal presses, lathes, grinding wheels, and work tables covered with tools, both insidious and crude, fill the rest of the room, all seeming to reach hungrily for the helpless Madron captives that hang from the ceiling. Most of the, uh, yeah. Most of the chained up Madrons are hanging towards your right. Towards your left, you find a variety of uh, pits covered in grates from which you hear the noises of Madrons who are, who sound worried, but not yet in pain. Fortunately, you came at during the night, and so the works here is not currently in operation. However, there are four more guards stationed throughout the room who don't seem to care about the, uh, the horrors inflicted upon sentient creatures and hanging from the walls and ceiling around them. So what now? Uh, how many guys are in here? Four. Four? I mean, just four guys. that We literally, like, destroyed them last time. I think we can afford to drop invisibility and destroy these guys. Yeah, I don't even like these gross things, and this is a bit much even for me. Sorry, just to be clear i shouldn't be like seeing a map or anything should i uh not not yet no okay uh if once you decide to go into combat there will be a map okay well yeah i mean we should probably help these modrons All right, so you're deciding to attack. I mean, they're in immediate harm's way, right? Like, uh, Well, nobody's experimenting on them immediately, but oh, uh, okay, they so. definitely need some aid. Right, they could I'm just... I, I was trying to figure out... Um, if we should explore more first. Well, there is also a staircase leading up. Is there any view from above that we can see from down here? Uh, from the angle you are currently at, no. But it does appear that there is uh, some part of the second floor overhanging where you're currently standing. And the stairs connect up to that overhang, that balcony area. There might be more people up there, so... I want to check up there first before we start off. All right. I don't know, might be sending alarms out, so... Yeah, that's valid. Um, so you can all go up at once, or one of you can uh, scout ahead. I mean, I've got pretty good stealth scores and, like, actually, no, that's right. Lily also has really good perception, so maybe scouting ahead would be prudent. Okay, yeah, I, I could scout. Okay. All right, I will need a stealth roll from you, uh, still with advantage and visibility still up. Yeah. All right, yeah, you make it up to the observation gallery. Um, there appear to be... There's a long rail that extends across it, except where the, uh, the staircase meets up with the second floor. And uh, there appear to be some uh, seats by the rails where people can sit down and observe the products of the rendering works uh, below 
And based on the fact that all six of the chairs up here are very finely crafted, you imagine that this is a privileged spot for observing the uh, the works in action. Uh, it's disgusting is what it is. However, because there is nothing happening down below, the gallery up here is deserted. However, you are able to see that there are several doors that uh, open onto this gallery and a narrow hallway towards the other side that leads inward and probably to further rooms. Mm. At least observe the doors real quick. All right. Um, well, give me the investigation roll then. All right. So let me just uh, check here. All right. There are sign. There are signs of activity coming from the. Uh, the doors closest to the stairs. Sounds like there is something going on in there, although in a place like this, you really have no idea what sounds could be producing what actions. I mean, the, just the process of this whole thing is beyond your understanding. But uh, once you go down the small hallway, it just sort of jinks to the right immediately after, and you... There are a total of five doors that open onto it. They appear to be uh, smaller rooms for individual high-ranking members. Um, two of them have lights coming from below the door jams. The other three are dark. Okay. But if you are able to move quickly and quietly, there is every reason to believe that you could take out these guards without alerting the rest of the building. Yeah, okay. That sounds like a good idea, then. <laughs> uh, so I should head back down, then, and inform everyone. All right. Sounds like a plan. All right, let's go. All right. And since you are effectively going for a surprise round here, I will skip initiative and just have each of you take one action. See if you can take down these guards fast enough. This Neverwinter Nights graphics... It very well might be. Okay. Uh, it definitely looks like it. Uh, well, if, uh, if we're going to combat, it's probably me who wants to get seen first. Probably? Yeah. All right, then take your round. Don't forget you have advantage on your first attack because you're invisible. All righty. Okay. And also because you're surprising them, so. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah. Um. As a quick question, where would the would it be any alarm, any obvious signs of uh, alarm bells or anything like that in the room? Uh, no. But there are enough uh, devices here, and the building is small enough that just shouting or slamming something metal against something metal would make enough of a racket. Uh, okay. So all of them are equally dangerous in terms of raising an alarm. Okay, well, gonna move along the wall here. Sure. And starting from the bottom, let's go knock some people out. Yeah, I think that does it. <laughs> I run damage as well, or? Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, 
That's one. Okay, round two. Their, their armor class is 12. <laughs> okay. Oh, so as long as you don't roll a natural one, you're good. All right, that's enough. Thirty-five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. That'll be forty to get you there. Yep, I got fifty. So fucking grenade, <laughs> hogging around the water. Yeah, well, I'm gonna see Sue, and I won't try and steal all the glory, but I will go and. Uh, Surprise this one on the end here. Alright. Just a quick punch. <laughs> oh, hey, that one survived your punch. Yeah, I'm not surprised You're by that. fucked up, though. Is that your tire turn? Yep, that's my bonus action. Alright, so... uh, right. Lake's gonna come in here. Fucking one Eldritch Blast at the, uh, the hurt dude. I'm pretty sure if it hits, it will kill him. Because the minimum it can do is six. Uh, fine. Yep, there we are. Wait, uh, this is supposed to be an advantage, but I don't... It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It literally does not matter. Does he have less than six hit points? Yes. He's dead. No, he's less than seven hit points. Excuse me. I keep forgetting that. And then uh, the other one's gonna eat two. Okay. So and plus well uh eighteen. It was remarkably close. I had 14 hit points. Ah. All right. Well, they're dead. All right. So now that you are in this chamber, you now that the guards are down, you have a chance to sort of appreciate the what's happened here. The Madrons hanging from chains have various bits of them missing. However, all of them are alive and crying out in pain. You're not sure these things... No, you're actually certain these things don't sleep. And so they, they don't even have unconsciousness to look forward to at any point. And uh, as you approach the grates towards the other side of the room, you're able to uh, look down and see uh, various Madrons just sort of stacked almost, uh, crowded together in these grated pits and uh, just sort of staring upwards, wondering what's going to happen to them. Except for one. Because in one of the pits, you spot a, uh, a human among the Madrons. Hi. I'm, I'm sorry? You're not with them, are you? Uh, if we were, if we are, we are in a lot of trouble. You just because we just killed I, four I, friends. I dress way too nicely to be one of these guys. You dress way too nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Did my brother send you? Are you our reinforcements? Are are you a I'm brother not sure of a who's your brother? What's who's your brother? Sir Vamish Krasad. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, Krasad. Yeah. Of the order of the uh, Plains Militant. Yeah. Oh no, it's a different famous facade. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yes. Your brother did, although he didn't mention uh, 
having a brother. You. Uh, well, he was probably busy. I was the one who warned him about this place. But of course, where are my manners? I, I am... Crap, where is the damn entry? <laughs> The joys of running a prefab. Uh, I am Greer Krasad. And, uh... I infiltrated this place to find out what these planar miscreants are up, were up to. But their vile deeds were greater than I had imagined. I attempted to send my brother a message, but I was worried because I was interrupted before I could finish seems that he must have gotten it for you to have come here. Will you let me out? The Madrons also need to escape this place. That's the hey. plan, at least. It Can I be... just use the insight quickly? Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, wanna... I'm sure he's on the up and up because he managed to answer the guy's name without uh, without us having Chief. to... Uh, mentioning it, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. He could be the evil brother. Yeah. Uh, she. Oh, okay. Oh, she? I, oh, I'm sorry. I yeah. thought you said it was a man. Yeah. The Lady Crassad. Sorry. But, uh, yes. Sir Vamish's sister, Greer Crassad. Okay. Well, then let me edit my, uh, my notes <laughs> here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Aurelia, for one, can immediately de detect the family resemblance in how they talk. Yeah, yeah they both sound like assholes. <laughs> And uh, aside from that, there appears to be some um, visual similarities. And the fact, and f as a matter of fact, it also looks like she's been poorly kept down here. Um, beaten, starved, probably thirsty as well. Uh, All right. Probably not. Uh, yeah, I'll let her out then. She looks hardy. Hardy enough to uh, escape on her own, but uh, probably wouldn't be a good idea to bring her further in if you intend to get into the thick of it. Uh, all right, well, I'll she leave that up to her. Go out back and steal a horse, it's fine. Yeah. Ah, uh, was that? Yeah. That is where they're keeping them, yes. I will go report to my brother immediately. Do what you can to destroy this place. And defeat the ones in charge. If they don't come quietly, then... Make sure they aren't able to perpetrate these foul deeds ever again. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure we're gonna kill this. <laughs> and I got news for you, they're, they're not leaving here alive. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, Aurelia is lawful good. He's not lawful stupid. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And uh, for their part, the Madrons uh, all climb out of the pits. Um, there's actually a specific number for how many are captured here. Six monodrones, one tridrone, and one pentadrone. And... Uh, Let's roll them. Most of them climb up out of the pits... Um, and immediately head out the front door. Okay, that's something we're going to try and stop. This is not our best idea. But let's see what happens. I mean... Don't worry, I, I will distract the guards. You go to the second floor. That's where all the worst of it happens. Got it. Second floor. Got it, coach. I will do... <laughs> the Madrons will apparently distract them, I suppose, but I will also attempt to uh, draw the guards away from this place while you finish your work here. And, uh... Okay. But yes, the uh, 
What's interesting about the Madrons is that they don't look grateful or satisfied or even, they, they don't even look at you as you open the grates to let them out. Yep, the only, sounds about right. The only one who does anything is the Pentadrone, who just pauses for a second and says, uh, The disassembled ones are uh, currently uh, inefficiencies. Destroy them or bring them to Meganus for repairs. And then without a further word, it walks out. Okay, well. I mean, they, they do have the carriages in back. Do. Uh, that said, let's let's uh, let's kill some people. Yeah, let's finish the job here first, and then we'll come back to get these guys out. I've been knock knock the two uh, stable hands out. <laughs> uh, this place is fucking disgusting. Mm-hmm. So we some more chance to ring it out. All right, so when you climb the stairs, like I said, there is a row of four doorways. Um, and you've heard uh, some activity going on in at least one of them. Lily did. Yes. No, so, okay. uh, which of these doors did you want to investigate first? Uh, what, were they, what were they again? Just a... Uh... Like what are the doors we're looking at again? Uh, there are four doors followed by a hallway in which the higher ups have their living quarters. Okay. Now uh, we can check out the rooms that are dark first. Okay, so you head down the hallway into the uh, living quarters to check out the empty rooms? No, that's. I mean, yeah, I would, but. What does everyone else think? That sounds fine. Uh, well, actually, mm, you should probably... Oh, no, no, she said that they'll create a distraction. Yeah, we can... Let's check out the empty room. All right, well, each of the empty rooms is empty. Nobody's inside. Nobody's asleep. Nobody is currently inhabiting them, although they appear to have left some of their stuff behind. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Let's see, for each one there is... Oh, that's pretty nice. Let's see, uh, 36, 40, 57... ...times 10. 570 gold pieces worth of just miscellaneous spare change, uh, treasure, and artwork artifacts. Is any of the art good? Uh, no. Not to your taste. Would you trust the taste of anyone here? Never know. There could be, like, the one guy... Who's like super into the actual good stuff and everybody makes fun of him for so it. So we can just divide that five yeah. ways. Yeah. Like a hundred and thirty five each. Is that uh, the math that... right? <laughs> you did not. I did not, okay. <laughs> um it would be All right, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna use a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank. I I didn't use one, one which is why. Uh, 114. Each. Okay, so 114. Got it. All right, and uh, yeah, so Lily rolled high enough. So three of the main doors open into what you would guess are laboratories where the magic happens. The last one is another storage room full of miscellaneous junk, mostly, in this case, the uh, surgical tools and chemicals. So, do you want to investigate the laboratories or the inhabited rooms next? 
I'll go with the laboratories. It's my uh, genius decision, personally. All right, well, the inhabitants of each one are different, so uh, give me a number one through three. Uh, let's go with one. All right, everybody up for that? The first lab? Yeah. Let's go. All right, and uh, keeping in mind that three of you are still invisible, unless you wish to drop it right now. Nope, I'm staying invisible. All right. Well, uh, when Grenache or Lake opens the door, you see that there is a human on an operating table whose legs uh, above the knee have been cut off and replaced with the spindly metal legs of monodrones. Fucked up. There is one uh, lab worker who is just sort of observing him occasionally write, uh, writing notes on the desk next to him, but otherwise just uh, watching over this person. And uh, when he sees Grenache and Lake, uh, yeah, Grenache and Lake enter the room, he goes, Ah, hello. Hi. Yeah, come to see our progress. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to roll deception, which is something I don't roll very often, but I'm fairly good at. All right. Of course. I'm luckying that, by the way. <laughs> That's a good turnaround. <laughs> almost a almost a opposite coin flip. Yeah, it's almost the other side of the dice. <laughs> All right, so let's just say that you sort of uh, cough and toss up your hood immediately to hide your uh, halo glow before continuing. Yes, yes, in yeah. fact, we are here to see the progress. Yeah. That's, how, how is it progressing? Well, this is one of our best test subjects yet. I'm really uh, expecting good results out of this one. The leg seems stable so far. He is recuperating. That's going to take some time. So uh, please don't disturb him right now. I'm not sure what would happen if he were. Okay. Uh, so how, how long do you think we you have until we've got it down? Oh, uh, until we can start replacing all... All the various metal parts out of these modrons? Hard for me to say. I'm, I'm just the, one of the assistants here. But um, based on the progress we're making, it shouldn't be more than a few months. Uh, certainly before the modron march ends, so we should get plenty of spare parts for it. Um, of course, as you know, the hard part is keeping the modrons alive. I mean, uh, well, it's uh, hardly useful to have the parts just dissolve into rust, just like that. And so... <laughs> and so, yeah, the, yeah, the, rusting the, the hard be part is... The hard part, as far as I'm concerned, is figuring out uh, a way to store these things more permanently than we have. I mean, uh, the room out there has got uh, plenty of chains, plenty of spots left to fill up, but uh, if we're keeping up this progress, then uh, we're going to need more. Okay, yep, thank you, Grenash. <laughs> no rolls is needed. This is a non-combatant. Thank you, oh my god. One Why of you. knockout? Just fucking end him. <sighs> do it. Do it, Grenache. Do it. Fucking if you want to do the honest, you can. Uh, you know you want to. Is drinks like that? Not worth my time. Uh, you know you want to. 
Anyway, instead of trying to convince our good friend to do a murder in cold blood, maybe <laughs> we should move on. Okay. Uh, well, fuck stealth. I'm gonna I'm gonna end this fucker. Uh, you will become in, you will become visible if you do. I'm okay with that. Okay. I can make myself invisible. All right. Yeah. Just uh, pull out one of your daggers for a nice queen quick kill. Yep. Which is better than he deserves. All right. Um, moving okay. on to the sec second lab. At least we know what's going on. They're becoming fucking transhumanists or something. I don't know. Hmm. I was gonna leave him to the wrath of his superiors. Let them deal with him. Then we're gonna kill them too. Yeah, we're gonna kill them too. Yeah. Well, whoever's left. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, Lily. Well, you wanna kill that abomination against the gods? And I point to the guy who's like got robot legs now. I, uh... All oh, right, that thing. Are you sure we can't can't save him? I mean, I think he went through this willingly. Did he? It certainly sounded like it. Well, I'm leaving this room then. Check. Yeah, let's, let's see. Um, let's just say insight to read his features. All right. Uh, yeah, this guy does not look terribly distinct from the guards downstairs. He's got the same sort of pattern of battle scars, the same um, rough, poorly kept appearance. He appears to have been a volunteer from the ranks, rather oh, than can... a uh, an abducted target. Uh, he can have fun with his sweet cyber leg on that table. Alright, so what exactly are you going to do to this person? I'm just gonna leave. He's clearly not doing great. Alright, anybody else going to do anything? No. Nah. Listen, if, if li fun. even Lily, the evil one, isn't willing to kill this guy, it is not worth it, probably. I mean, maybe it's because she's evil that she maybe. won't kill him. Yeah, actually. Oh. Figured it out. <laughs> All right, but um, assuming we're moving on, the second chamber turns out to be empty. It is, although there, this does give you a chance to look around and see that the rooms are full of uh, documents. There are. Um, details about the dismembering and bonding processes that the rendering works is going through just observations of what worked and what hasn't and along with uh, several books referenced tomes about the anatomy of humans and a variety of planar creatures some of which you're familiar with some of which you're not Cool. I want to learn about planar creatures. All right. Well, uh, you. The main ones are the Madrons, of course, as well as humans. Well, those aren't necessarily planar, but the the other two you note are a book about Githzerai, which you've heard of before, and the Bariar, which you probably haven't. No. Probably not, but let me roll Arcana anyway, or if... Well, just reading the tome gives you enough information. They, are, they appear to be some sort of satyr-like creature, but instead of just having two legs below the waist, they have a full four. And so they, they appear to be like a donkey below the waist and a um, humanoid above... Ah, a mini tar. So like a centaur? Huh. No, that's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> well, a centaur construction, but like I said, donkey rather than uh, horse. Nice. Ah, yes, an ass that don't quit, I say. <laughs> and based on the introduction section, it appears that they are 
negative to the realm of uh, Eastguard. Hmm. Interesting. You haven't okay. been there yet, but it is the more chaotic than good plane. I mean, if these books are holding in useful information, you might be able to refer to later. I, yeah, I was going to say, can I burn the medical notes and press the digitation? Well, um, I'm going to say that Lorm, for one, is going to take the books. I okay, and just I sort of the medical notes, but yeah, and yeah, he, no, no, he, he's going to take the books, hand them over to uh, Aurelia to talk, to uh, put into her uh, bag of holding, mm -hmm. and then tell you we should burn the notes. Maybe the whole building, but definitely the notes. Oh, the building's definitely going down at some point. Oh, these yeah, notes for the, now. Build, the building's gonna go up in some flames. Yeah, so I'm gonna burn the medical notes and press the digitation. I don't know if it really agrees with burning the notes, to be honest, but... It's pure fucking sadism. So wait, why does Lily want to burn them? Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, uh... I'm burning them. <laughs> Fair enough. So, the third lab has uh, has had the most sounds of activity in, throughout the building at this hour. And uh, as you open the door, you see one of those barriar I just mentioned, currently being held down by three lab assistants, who are trying to talk him into uh, calming down and uh, lying back down on the uh, operations lab. Uh, oh, it's time to make a friend. Uh, yeah. Uh, great. Each one of them is it. At the moment, a, a, a moment a I should add, this uh, Baryar already has a Quadrome's arm attached to the uh, left stump, and one of the mono Monodrone's monocles um, just uh, screwed into the skull and over the right eye. Yeah, the three lab assistants are eating an Eldritch Blast each. I'm sure that'll probably kill them. Yes, like I said, they are non-combatants. Yep, they're done. Okay, at which point, uh, once the three fall away from him, the Bariar just sort of... <sighs> ah! And rushes you guys. Uh, I put up my hands and I go, whoa, 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 we're, we're here to save you. He <laughs> rushes, he shows no regard, uh, no signs of comprehending what you're saying. Okay. Uh, yeah, good Ash will jump, jump in front and hold a defensive stance. He is, um, Despite not being strong enough to actually harm Grunash, he is going to continuously attempt to scratch and bite at him. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna use suggestion and ask him to calm down. The call. spell fails. You find oh, no mind to grasp. Ah, uh, well, fuck. Oh. Okay, huh. so do we... I guess. So he's an automaton. So. While, while I'm defending, I'll refer to Temper. Is there anything we could do to save this one? Put him out of his misery at this yeah, point. Yeah, Lily's just gonna move in for the kill. <sighs> Very well. Yeah. I love it. I mean, Lily beats him. Much, then fair enough, but. Alright, uh, well, yeah. So. The Bariar is noticeably stronger possibly because of the madness than the guards downstairs, but not enough to be worth uh, rolling in and rolling a whole fight about, around it. Mm. Within moments, you've uh, uh, stilled him for the last time. Man, this place that, sucks. Yeah, that sucked. This whole place sucks. Uh, you recall that the lab assistant in the other room mentioned how the person on the slab was one of their better uh, results.
You suspect this was one of the less good ones. Well, sucks. let's move on into the main chamber and kill everybody. <laughs> well, at this point, there are two occupied um, high rank bedrooms left. Okay, let's investigate those, I guess. All right, uh, there is one at the end of the short hallway and one that is on the right side of it. I want the one at the end. I want the one on yeah. the right. All right, well, it's... It would be best to pick one, so oh, let okay, me know. Okay, well then, if we're only doing one, then I'll do the other one that everybody else is going towards. Yeah. Straight ahead? Yep. I decide whichever one seems to be quietest, but yeah. Well, that, that would actually be the one straight ahead. Fair enough. All right, uh... As you enter the room, you see another barriar. This one female. She appears to be uh, holding a pair of reading spectacles to her face and uh, reading a small book by the light of the candle on the table in front of her. And uh, as you open the door, she looks up, uh, just a bit startled, probably considering the hour, but to say, reinforcements. At this hour. Hmm. Localized entirely in my room. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I um, thought Kalon was going to be the one to make the joke. If you're going to announce yourselves, announce yourselves, and please leave me to my studies. I'm sorry, who are you? You don't know. There aren't too many barriers here. I mean, I didn't know what a barrier was until like five minutes ago, so... Really? What hole did they drag you out of? A better one mm. than this. I am Yisa Nyklar. I am overseeing the studious part of this operation. And if you have no further personal business... I would suggest you leave me to it. You know what? I'm just going to throw a knife at her. I'm just going to throw a knife. It's nice and quiet. Well, hold on. Wait. No, no, no. Uh, we should... We should take her back with us. If she's actually in charge of this shit, we should take her in alive. She Can might. Everything. She might. Uh, she might be useful. Yeah, and sure I'd she rather not just up. execute her in cold blood or whatever. Okay, guess I'm going into pacifier then. Excuse me, what do you think you're doing? Bop. Well, I don't know. I came... Your choices at this point are I... come with us or, you know, fight back and probably die. So I came uh, back... I'd recommend. I came back just in time to hear, excuse me, what are you doing? Bop. <laughs> Which says all that I need to know about what happened when I was gone. Um, well, she actually has some hit points. So let me just arrange things here for you guys. That hits, by the way, a th 3 okay. plus 10. But I need to move you around to another part of the map here where I've arranged... Uh... Got things. <laughs> Zoom out. Yeah, zooming out and waiting till... So yeah, uh, map. There we are. Bop. Mm, bop. 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 Mm. Mm-hmm. 
va. All right, so yeah, that's as much as you get from a bop on her. Okay, well, seeing that uh, a bit tougher than I was expecting. All right, let's go, Tempo. And we could just <laughs> magic. I'm hoping this is one of those situations where, like, unless we roll a one, we don't miss. Yeah, she is unarmed and unarmored. It's just and that unprepared. she. Yeah, it's just that she is an actual combatant. Or could be out on the field. Mm. I, I should go next. Okay. <laughs> I won't go I don't even see your pog promise. here, but okay. Uh, you don't? I see it. Yeah, why don't you see? <laughs> that is kind of odd. I don't see Lily! Where's Lily? I'm that good at stealth, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, this is kind of important because she will attempt to flee if uh, you guys don't catch her in time. Okay. So those of you who aren't Grunash can roll initiative. Uh, so here's the question. Are we trying to take her alive or is... Yeah. That does sound like it's the plan, yes. Okay, well, I forgot yes. to select my pog, but whatever, I got a nine. Oh, apparently oh. you're all going to go first. Damn! She does not have a modifier. Okay, but what about Lauren? That's a fair question. It's a fair question. He's, he's see, been I, here the entire he's time. He's got two. Oh, he's yeah, just, he, he's just been taking it all he, in. He's get, He gets to go second. He's been making mental notes. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, Lily. I'm just gonna... Uh, 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 oh god, I'm having issues with roll 20 at the moment. So you're gonna have to oh, bear with me. Oh, there she is! Uh, apparently I'm grabbing both my pog and the screen at the same time. Uh, here. Yeah, uh, I, I, I must have grabbed it. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. no! What is going on? For me! <laughs> you know, it's uh, funny that I stand on stream, hope you enjoy the madness. This is not what I was expecting. <laughs> Something's up my mouse or something, I don't know. I've been having weird issues with my mouse just double-clicking lately, too, so... Uh, yeah. regardless. Uh, so I am not going to activate Prodador's Light, and I'll just swing the fucking pommel, because I'm a genius. This is my effort in doing non-lethal. All right. Um, if you're just swinging the pommel, I'm going to make you roll um, <clears throat> dagger dice. Okay. Uh, like dagger damage? Yeah. Yeah. All right. But it does have sneak attack because uh, Grenache attacked first. I'm fairly certain that I don't think she has enough hit points to survive. <laughs> Yeah, are you saying this d4 plus 8 plus, uh, what was it, 86 I think at this point? Yeah, 86. Is is too much for her health? I think so. I think we might be overdoing it a little bit. I know, but I want this. Alright, so yeah, you just come up from behind, go take a nap, whack, right into the neck. <laughs> just whispers of Taffer as she passes out. <laughs> well, that happened. Yep, and you got to her before she could raise an alarm, so nobody's going to come charging out of that last door. Okay, time to tie her up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, I do canonically have rope in my bag. Everybody has rope yeah. in their bag. I, I also have rope, it's true. <laughs> But mine is lighter than everyone else's. I also have drugs! Well, maybe not Lily's. Don't you also have spores, or did you finally get rid of those? The spores are the drugs! Ah! I still have grenades. I mean, I got to use a potion of water breathing. I, I've, I've thankfully used all my grenades. Wait, 
You still have a potion of water breathing from the fucking like yeah. abolith thing? Holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> that has got to have expired by now. <laughs> I never got rid of them, so it must taste funky as shit. Well, it makes a great sourdough base, as it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> So as you enter the final chamber, you note that uh, it's actually kind of odd because the inhabitant appears to be asleep, and the light source that you saw coming from below the door jam was a fire salamander. Okay. Uh, who is standing on guard to protect them. That being said, the salamander does not immediately attack you for opening the door. Okay. And instead just um, says to you, Why do you come here? What do I roll to know about fire salamanders? That, I believe, would just be pure arcana. Okay. okay. Because they are an interplanar creature. I know nothing. You're right, on fire! Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fire salamanders are, as you might have guessed, from the plane of fire. They oh. are creatures built entirely out of flames and flaming materials. But... Um, are generally more intelligent and more self-aware than the average fire elemental. You understand that they have a uh, society of a sorts on the plane, and uh, not as grand as that of the Ifrit, but still um, commendable in what they've accomplished. Oh, good for them. Um, do I know why one would be here? Well, based on the fact that it is threatening you and it is standing watch in a VIP's room, you figure it was uh, hired or compelled to be a bodyguard for this person. Hmm. Out here on the Outer Plains, it's hard to tell which of those two things might be true. It's probably safest to assume that it's... Uh, Talking it out of guarding is not going to be easy. So how do you respond to the challenge? What was this question again? What are you doing here at this hour? I could ask you the same thing. I was hired for 24 hour protection and I deliver. Please answer the question. Do you have business with my employer? Were you paid up front? What does that have to do with anything? Well, I'm, I'm saying it would probably be better for you if you were paid up front. I'm paid... I'm paid a wage based on term based on length of service. Standard mercenary contract. Fair enough. Mm. All right, well. <clears throat> so are you going to answer or do I have to cl close this door or are you going are we are we going to get into this or what? I mean... Well, I, yeah, I mean... Unfortunately, I think we're in a bit of an impasse here. Uh, you know, nothing personal, but... Nothing personnel, kid! <laughs> it kind of sounds like you're probably not amenable to... Dropping the whole contract, which, you know, fair enough. But yeah, I, I don't. I wouldn't recommend, um, you know, fulfilling your end of the bargain, as it were. Hey, boss, we got trouble. 
pokes him with the back end of his spear, and yeah. the guy wake. The guy uh, starts waking up, and well, I guess we'll roll initiative. Okay, uh, okay gotta roll my... again. Well, let's just keep keep the last rolls. Oh, uh, okay. Well, then. Well, I mean, I need to roll, so. Uh, yeah. Where, I think that was nine for Put me. Put it to good use. So. Nah, uh, uh, yes. Wait, sorry. Should we reposition our pods? Because. Uh, yeah, I would advise doing so. I would love to. Is this where the door is, or were we were we like yeah. just outside the door? Okay. Yeah, you open the door and you were talking to the salamander. Fair. Yeah, you in particular. Yes. And let's see. I really got I a hope ten. He doesn't roll too well. Oh, did. Oh, Grafty rolled. Because uh, I had no, a bad never rolled feeling that this fire place. element oh, okay. might have some kind of area of effect. <laughs> Right. I was wondering and... what'll happen if his employer dies. Ah, shit. Well, looks like I gotta find a new boss. You hired. <laughs> Entirely possible. Depends on uh, what order you take these guys out, I suppose. Oh, if hey, you let's want to find out. Let's kill his boss first, and then see if we can hire him. Yeah, to that was the plan. Okay. Yep. Well, I'll be honest. Actually, the plan is to see if I can force him to kill his boss. But you know. <laughs> We'll see, how, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right, uh, with a plus two. Yeah. <laughs> and his boss. Let's get some stats for him. Oh, no modifier. But a 14. This is bullshit. He was sleeping. He's very good at getting up, though. Yeah, and... Uh, he doesn't even drink coffee. It's impressive. The salamander poked him awake before combat could begin. What the point is... Fuck, I should have cast Dominate Monster before combat started. Yeah, that might have done something. Um, but it is Grenache's turn. Yep. The... Uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna be like, excuse me. And let loose. Alright, so at the very least, this guy is unarmored and has a zero dex modifier. So his AC so is 10. His AC is 10. So, so I literally just have to not get a 1. Yeah. It seems, to yes, be, it seems to be a running theme, these encounters. Yep. Okay, well, that's yeah, so This guy can actually survive a few hits, so let's see how it goes. Oh, damn. Look at the big stones on this guy. Fucking high roller. And since I don't really know what the salamander might get up to. I'm going to spend a key point and have my patient defense on guard. All right. That makes it Lily. Boy, how he does it. Do I want to go loud or not? Go loud. You're kind of out of uh, reasons to go quiet. True. Oh, okay, I'll use the gun. Oh, oh, you talked me into it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so how so... wide is this door? Um, you can get a shot from there. Okay. Can I use Aurelia as cover to stealth? <laughs> no, but it, it, the Salamander and the War Priest are both visible from your current location and adjacent to Grunash, so I think you're good. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna shoot the, the boy at the back. Yeah, as previously uh, stated, you... unarmored. Uh, I should I should have called it as a fucking yeah whatever sharpshooter shot. Yeah. Yeah, that does need to happen before the roll. Yep, uh, that's why I said I should have. Uh, should have, could have, would have. Uh, it's two d10. That's right. Plus six. Plus eight d six. 
And you know what? I'm fucking completely disgusted by this entire place. It has been nothing but foul, miserable, and fucking horrendous. Yes, I'm technically an evil character, but more self-servicing evil and not fucking heinous evil doctor shit evil. Not either the Dr. Moreau people. bullshit, but with robots instead. Yeah, so right, fuck all of this. Is all Mandela. fucking suck. Yeah, the island of Dr. Mendela. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just combine them both. <laughs> Dr. Ming. <laughs> Damn it, you, you, you made this. So you did the same thing Dr. I did. Dr. Mangalum. <laughs> Not enough. Son of a bitch. This is a chuffy lad. God damn. Mm -hmm. I was going to power word stun him, but he's so close to being dead, I just might try and kill him if he's still alive during my turn. Well, it is his turn. And seeing as what's happened here. Let's see. I'm looking through the spell list. I'm not seeing too much that's promising. So instead of casting any of those spells, he is going to take the uh Yeah, he is uh going to take the withdraw action and jump out the window. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that happened. <laughs> okay, I'm guessing the um, I guess I can't get a thing for that. Yeah, that's that's what it, that's the action he took. Yeah, he to took disengage. You know. Yeah, or disengage. That's that's Don't the worry. one. You can just jump after him. Yeah, it's yeah. Or, no, it's R one D six. What am I doing? Oh, in fact, Aurelia can jump after him because Aurelia is really good at jumping now. <laughs> or like yeah, he, just, like, he rolls into the fall and he, yeah, he tucks and rolls into the fall, only takes one point of damage. And he is booking it. <laughs> He's trying to outspeed you, me. So, like, are, are you sure the action was disengaged and not defenestrate? <laughs> 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 now, that was his movement. Ah, I see. <laughs> I, I lean over and I'm like, hey, hey, you, your employer just ran out. To, you Are you susceptible to being hired now? Maybe? No, because he's still alive. He's still protecting him. Yeah. It's not how this works. I mean, he's, he's going to prevent us from going after him. If he can. Okay, let's see here. How, f how far can he go? Not far enough, actually. Are we on, uh, like, a, the second story? Or? Yes. Okay. That's why he took falling damage. Right. I thought it was because he was clumsy. Okay, so he is going to uh, go up over here. Uh, Lorem is, is going to tell uh, Aurelia, hurry up after him, would you? And cast Fly on you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't even really need that, but sure. It's nice to have. Well, your movement speed is now 60. That's fair. And it's your turn. Um. Okay, well, I... That's why I took the... Took that action in that order. Fly over there, I guess. I mean, I, I assume I can't fly around the guy in a way that will prevent him getting opportunity attack. So, no, but he is uh, challenge rating five, so you can probably tank this. Oh, okay. That's that's not very tough. I mean, I also have my thing that lets me get a oh. chance at avoiding it anyway uh well, well, okay, well maybe not not in that case no 
Is is there a way that you can turn that into a not natural twenty, or does that ability? I don't not... think there's. Okay. I don't no. think there's anything that can prevent okay. a natural. Okay. I was just making. There sure. is a grave cleric ability that cancels natural twenties, but aside from that, no. Okay, I was just wondering. I don't know how your shit works. Okay. God, grave cleric's a horse shit. Well, uh, you know, go ahead and. All right. Uh, the second set of dice are fire damage. Uh, don't you resist fire damage though, or don't no, you get rid not of anymore? I oh. resist cold damage now. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the price for going goth. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It's my armor. Yeah. It's made of a silver what? dragon, not a red dragon. The price you pay for going goth. I Oof. have. I only it have. Doesn't match your hair though. I only have silver exactly. dragon like arm guards, which have no fucking a bit, like actual benefit. They just look cool. I have a head mounted no, on a fucking is, wall. Sorry, but what kind of attack was that? I just I want to picture this. Uh, it was a spear. His, Ow. His very long spear that is appropriately sized to a very large creature and is also kind of on fire. Like, not fully. It's just like... Uh, if heat and metal was constant and permanent, and the person wielding it didn't care. That sucks. Heat metal, by the way, is a fucking awful spell. <laughs> I don't mean that in the sense that it's, the spell is bad. I mean in the sense that, like, you're cooking someone alive in their own armor. It's awful. Yeah, I didn't take it because it felt weird. Sadistic. Yeah. yeah. Well, regardless, uh, that was the penalty you took for moving, but you do have your action and you do have a clear line of sight on the fleeing war priest. What can I get straight? To, I mean, well, I suppose I can just cast a spell. That's true. Then, yeah, you. Your uh, current speed is 60. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't say that's quite enough to get up to him, considering he fell down a floor. Well, I, I could just misty step. At the window, you'd be you'd have used thirty five feet, so you got twenty five to work with. Either way, if you're working at range, anything with thirty or more is good enough. Yeah, I'm just thinking yeah. what would be what would be good here. I mean, do I have to keep in mind as a wizard? Probably we would probably prefer to capture this guy. It's not necessarily. We already have what's her face. Yeah, that's true. But he is fleeing. I don't know. Uh, but also, he has a minion who is going to cause us trouble. Uh, true. Who did just stab you in the ass? Yeah, but if that's we kill this guy, then maybe since this guy doesn't work. Apparently, he's pretty good at his job. Well, yeah. Um, sorry, I don't know why I'm so paralyzed by indecision here. It's just like kind of I don't know. I don't know if I really would want to kill this guy. Well, if you don't Lake has, it has a clear shot at him, so Lake will. Does Lake? Have Nothing, man. The guy fell, so oh, you don't that's... have a clear shot on him. Eh, I'll just move over to the window and shoot down. Yeah. Whatever. Um. Oh, sorry, I I don't know why I shouldn't. This shouldn't be a hard, difficult thing. Okay, whatever. Um, it really is just going to cast Tasha's to laughter on him. No, you know what? She's going to cast Otto's irresistible dance on him. All right. So, yeah, he's he's dancing, and then she's kind of go over here, and if Link really wants reference. to go kill him, then uh, go ahead. You got a ways to go to get over there. Yeah. And uh, she's going to dodge. Uh, 
Yeah, about 45 feet to get to the window. Nash is standing in right in the only square. Mm, I can get. I probably won't have light on him. Yeah, you need to get up to the window to have line of sight at, mo at the moment. Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, he's going to be dancing for a while, so. The roof sort of overhangs. That is a valid okay. spot. Okay. All right, and I guess the big boy here can make his opportunity. No, he already went. Oh, that's right. He already used the reaction. That's right. Yeah, you only get one reaction a turn. Right. Um, is there anything as I can do as a spell? I mean, it's probably actually no. You know what? It would be worth it to cast hex because uh, because then I can just bounce it to somebody else when he dies. So I'll go ahead and use my bonus action to cast hex on him. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's my turn. Oh, oh you're probably reading on what the Salamander. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> it's his turn. And, uh, yeah, seeing his employer jump out the window like that, uh, the Salamander goes, Well, shit. I'm out. Later, dude. Have a good life. But you want okay? Well, I mean, you can take rea uh You have the opportunity to take reactions, but he is dashing and taking the long way. Nah, let him go. Yeah, I mean, just not quite as desperate as that guy. That's fair. All right, can we just say we kill this man and get it over with? No, well, let's not kill him now. Let's capture him. Well, it's up to Grunash. I guess. Basically. But jump after him and go for the knockout. Yep. Uh, but wait, you have to take 1d6 hit point damage. No. Surely. Oh, no. No. No, no because isn't he a monkey can, like, negate that? Yeah, that's why I I'm could... speaking oh. sarcastically, yes. Okay. I thought you were speaking sarcastically because 1d6 by this point is nothing. Well, yeah. that too. <laughs> It does use my reaction, but what am I going to use my reaction for right now? So yeah, jump down and keep beating him with my rhythm stick. You have advantage if it matters. Oh, well, I mean... I don't, I don't think it matters. It might. I mean, let's see if I can get a crit. Why not? No crit. Okay. I mean, especially because he's a half orc. Yeah. So, one bop. Do I still get advantage or no? Because that would, would have knocked him out. No, it? it's from um, autos. And that doesn't stop if he gets attacked? No. Oh, okay. Well, advantage again then. Nope, still a crit. So again, when it actually matters. Not yet. <sighs> Damn it. Is he going to make me use another key point? Let's see. He is not. So it's, uh, it's kind of grotesque, honestly. Because you, you, you finish by punching him out, and you knock him to the floor, and you know he's not going to get up from that anytime soon, but his legs are still twitching up and around like he's trying to dance. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's irresistible! Hey, hey Laura, mind helping me drag this body? Transcends consciousness! All right, so you have captured both of the currently uh, present lieutenants. And for that, matter, they, for that matter, they both also had valuables in their rooms. 
which I'm oh, sure yeah. Lily is not going to overlook. Yeah. Oh god, no. So that's another gold? 36... 360 gold pieces worth of valuables. Tasty. So, uh, nice and even 72 more. For everybody. Yeah! Right. So, so Lorm, how about helping me move this body? It seems a bit morbid to call it a body when she's still breathing, but... A body! I got a body, you got a body, she's got a body, it's a body. Everybody's got a body. Everybody body. I mean, I'm Everybody pretty sure... Everybody... I'm pretty sure some celestial beasts somebody. don't actually have a body, but okay. It doesn't matter, we're still hauling a body. Okay, uh, Lorem does his best. He's got a haul ass, and there's nothing we can do about it. Lorem does his best, but he has nine strength. I don't expect much from Lorem, <laughs> it's hey, just nice to have another person. He's still stronger than, like... <laughs> and Aurelia. <laughs> God, y'all are pathetic! Okay, not all of us rolled, like, an average of 16 on our dice. <laughs> do you have, you have 13 strength? Uh, some of us do have dump stats. <laughs> yeah, mine was wisdom. All right, uh, just to wrap this up uh, fairly quickly at this point. Um, <clears throat> so, you are going to be burning the notes. Uh, you will be taking the two prisoners and probably on a couple of spare horses from the uh, rear or from the stable area. And there is, there, there, there does appear to be a bit of chaos. Um, because uh, we should haul some carts out front, given that's where the chaos is. Because uh, Greer apparently um, messed with the guards and the horses before she left as well. Oh, Very good. And, uh, yeah, so aside from that, it appears that the, uh, the rendering works are currently, uh, uninhabited for the moment. So, uh, after tying up your prisoners and f I assume freeing up the horses, what will you do with what's left inside? Uh, we should probably haul any not dead. Modrons back to the march. Yeah. Yeah. Weren't they supposed to go back to Mechanist, though? Yeah, to get repairs. Yeah. Can think about getting that arranged. I think if we brought these guys back to, back to the march, they would just dispose of them. Yeah. Themselves. Would they? I don't know. I thought we were told to bring him back to the march. I thought we were told to bring him back to Mechanus. They did say Mechanus for repairs. Yeah. Okay. Or or else to destroy them. Because in their current state, they are inefficient. Hmm. Was what the Madron told you. We could have Greer just take him back. Yeah. It's fine. But yeah, you do have an opportunity to... Um, Harness up two of the horses to a cart and take what's left of the living Madrons with you. Yeah, uh, we could also have Greer possibly meet up with her brother and then escort it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've burned the notes in a pile. Do you set fire to the whole building or leave it be? Torch it. Torch it. Torch the whole Man. thing. Aurelia is fine with leaving it be. She doesn't particularly like the idea of like burning anyone alive. Um, well, at this point, there's no one alive left inside. Yeah, there is. There's yeah. a sleep. No, boy. they're out front. Yeah, the, the two people you captured are with you. You've 
No, what I, about the the guy who had the leg transplant? Oh, that one guy. Oh, yes, that one guy is dead left. anyway. Yeah, so uh, really is going to object to burning it with that guy alive. If we were going to kill him, then we should at least kill him mercifully. We shouldn't. Yeah, him. leaving so him alive want, to, to suffer. But do you want to kill him or do you want to move him? At this point, because it sounds like the building's going up, and that there's also no caretakers left to watch over him. Let's kill him. Yeah, he's yeah. pretty fucked. Right. I, like, and, Someone and just like really uh, like uh, like like would not want this guy to burn alive. That sounds like a horrible way to die. So. Mm. Yeah, someone just mercy kill him. Yeah, right. uh... and uh, for the record, if you didn't immediately stab him through the neck and kill him, um, trying to move him at all would have caused him to, uh, to go through a seizure and die. Oh. Oh, okay. So, honestly, in, ter in terms of um, least harm, that actually is the best action. Okay, cool. Fair enough. That's awful. <laughs> Whoever wrote this part of the module was like fucking edgelord. <laughs> what, you, the five-story orphanage and Heart's Faith didn't tip you okay. off. No, no, like, <laughs> that was funny, Dark. That was like, like, that's hilarious. A five-story orphanage and what equates to essentially lawful good heaven. This is just... Like that. But it's not equates. It is literally lawful yeah. good, and it is literally heaven. Yeah, like like a five story <laughs> orphanage in heaven is hilarious. This is just stupid and grim dark. <laughs> okay, well, while you're discussing how grim dark this place is, if we're setting fire to this place, I'm gonna actually use a ring. I've got a ring of shooting stars, so oh yeah. So I might as well use it and. Yeah. What does it do? Uh, one of the actions is to summon shooting stars. Uh, I'm going to use one to three stars from the ring. Uh, range of 60 feet. Um, dexterity save to determine damage from attack, and it's 5d4 damage per hit. I think that works for starting a fire. Uh, what damage type? Uh, fire damage. Well, there you go. Arson with style. Mm, nice to know. All right. Um, the place burns and creates a backdrop that just um, contrasts with the sky lighting, lightning above you as the sun finally begins to rise. The cart is full of partly disassembled Madrons who are as carefully as possible placed in there, but who are still moaning and occasionally screaming in anguish. Your two prisoners have woken up by this point and are keeping quiet for the time being. And any attempts to interrogate them will probably be interrupted by the Madrons as well. You eventually meet up, back up with... Uh, Yes. Uh, you eventually meet back up with Sir Crisad and his sister, Sir Crisad. Uh, no, no. Only one of them is a knight. Hmm. I, well, I also yep. figured it would have been Dame Crisad. Well, Greer is a ranger rather than a pal paladin. Hmm. And she's got a few less levels. Okay. Still relatively formidable, though. What level is uh, Vamus or whatever? Oh, Vamish is level 12. His sister is level 9. Right, that's nothing. Yeah, we could wipe the floor with them. Yeah, but yeah. compared compared to these assholes, they're pretty high up there. Yeah, so basically they could wipe the floor with these assholes and we can wipe the floor with them. Mm -hmm. It's called the pecking order. And in this instance, we're on top. 
Right. And uh, yes, they will take charge of the captives and the victims that you bring them in the cart. Uh, Sir Vamish will be uh, quite happy to uh, see the results of your um, success. But he will also only still only pay you 300 gold pieces per head. That's fair. Yeah. Or zero in my case. Yes. But he promised no additional bonuses, and he intends to keep that lack of a promise. Eh, no, it makes sense. That's fine. We did. I mean, obviously, Aurelia didn't do it for the reward. It was it was in, in the contract. And also, if 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 he made exceptions, it would set a bad precedent. No, that's fine. I understand. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, after the uh, your charges are basically taken up by the order of the plains militant. Uh, in an official capacity, and following that, the uh, the raids on the Madron March come to a halt. You get the feeling that the Takarim are still out there, but this particular effort of theirs has... Uh, you've successfully put a stop to it. Cool. Better luck in 256 years, assholes. Yeah, this sucked. All right. And, uh... So, following this particular part of the adventure, you successfully get to the next gate town, and from there you pass into the Twin Paradises of Bytopia. Right. Now this is the place between lawful good and neutral good. Yes. More good than lawful. Yes. So this is basically... I, I have high expectations for this place, because this is basically the place that matches up most closely to uh, Aurelia's personality slash whatever, ideology, alignment. I mean, her alignment is lawful good, but she's... With a Y. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Lake's a tree fucker, so it sounds more like Pantopia. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Pantopia is when I had sex with the satyr. <laughs> yeah. You all are the worst. <laughs> Dend Dendrophilia? Right, anyway. Yeah, Dendrophilia, that would be it. <laughs> so. The gate town for Bytopia is called Trade Gate, and it has a bunch of um, individually owned stalls that are sort of lining the main path towards the uh, the gate to Bytopia. And uh, each one is well. Have any of you been to a Renaissance fair? Yes. No. I love the Ren Fair. I'm not enough of a nerd to go to a Ren Fair. That's well, a lie, and you like, know it. It's sort of like the crafters section, where there's just this big long line of artisans selling their various wares along the main thoroughfare through town, and uh, each one has a different specialty, like clothing or cloaks or leather mugs or whatever. Uh, the one I went to in Annapolis. Both times had a hammock sales uh, sales place, and they actually had some pretty nice and comfortable hammocks. Yeah, yeah the closest closest thing I've ever been to is the fucking medieval times. And that's nothing like a run fair. <laughs> no, it's not. Nah. It's, it's certainly an experience, though. It is. It really is. That you only ever need to have once at most. <laughs> so, Bytopia. As you enter the plain, you see a sprawling pastoral landscape 
surrounding you. There are places for uh, animals to uh, eat grass. There are fields. There are small towns with uh, bits of industry. A lot of water wheels, a lot of windmills. And uh, the towns never seem to be very large, however. And when you look up, you see the other plane of Bytopia. Similar layout, forests and plains and past, uh, pastures. And, uh, but the bits of civilization that you can see from your location are smaller. Smaller farms, smaller pastures. Instead, there are more mountains, uh, rougher terrain, thicker forests, and, from what you can tell, more cloud cover. Storms blow through the other plane quite with some frequency, whereas where you are, the low-hanging clouds don't deposit too much moisture. And you can see, surrounding you, several ways to cross between the two planes. Mountains that keep on rising until they meet mountains from the other side and turn into pillars of a sort. And you can see surrounding the pillars bits of industry as hot air balloons uh, propel metal uh, and wooden containers upwards towards the uh, gravity plane and then just sort of flip over and then descend back down towards the other side as the hot air cools down. Oh yes. And everyone is a gnome. <laughs> no! The twist. No! <laughs> <laughs> no! Turns out no, the, no! It turns out the no, perfect no, no. Turns out the perfect <laughs> nexus point between lawful and neutral is gnome. No wonder why Lily hates them so much. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> Well, I do exaggerate. There are occasional humans and elves and other such um, petitioners among the crowd, but by and large, the nine out of ten people you meet while you're traveling through Bytopia are gnomes. Are you sure this isn't some kind of punishment? Wait, do we have the opportunity to like chat with any of them? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you are following how, in the wake of the march. Themselves? Do they have funny names? You know, some of them do, but others have m more normal names that appear to have been picked uh, more to sound like tr a traditional first and second, uh, first and family name. Anyway, I don't know I mean, if I should be disappointed really or not. Her, so she she's happy with this place. I, I don't know if I should be disappointed by the lack of stupid names or not. <laughs> Lily is now having an internal crisis. Well, there is one thing, which is that one day as you are passing through the well-trodden um, wake of the Madron March, you notice that there is one rather familiar looking gnome sitting on a stump with a pipe in her mouth who smiles and waves when she sees you approach. Ah. Is it? Oh, is it? Is it Amanda? It is Amanda hug and kiss. It, she does look a bit different, younger, without the stress lines. Oh, but you know that smile anywhere. I really is. I really is gonna go talk to her. I figured you'd be on this path. You know, word's been getting around about the whole Madron march and the folks who've been seen wandering through its wake, helping people out. 
You're making a name for yourself out here, you know? Or? I, I suppose oh, yeah. I... Saviors of hearts, faith, destroyer of the Madron, uh, uh, mutilators. Listen, Amanda, I'm, I'm really sorry that I, I didn't... I came to find you when the when the attack started, and I, I just I didn't get there in time. Don't you feel already... sorry. Don't feel sorry about that. I threw myself into danger to help other people survive. If anything, you helped me out. I was going down a dark path when you when we first met, owned some bad people, some a lot of money. There's a chance that my life might have turned out a whole lot differently without you. You helped me remember what uh, living like a gnome is all about. So I got to come here. So does that mean that you wouldn't you wouldn't like me to try to bring you back then? <laughs> Are you kidding? Just. Make sure the school does well. That's all I really need it. That's all you really need to do for me. Okay. Here in Biotopia, well, it's actually pretty simple because everybody has a job. Every job is hard work. And because this is a paradise, hard work always pays off. Now up there, there are some prospectors. She points up towards the uh, other plane far above you. Up there are some prospectors willing to brave a little extra danger for a little extra reward. Uh, all the gold and gems and rare plants, valuable woods are up there. It's just a bit more dangerous, but... Uh, and adds to the spice, you know? Right. Hmm. As for me, well, I'm glad enough to be down here. You know, they still need entertainment. And that's, uh, especially among gnomes, it's a, certainly a valuable job. They don't all have the sense of humor we have on Minth. Well, I'm I'm sure you'll fix that eventually. <laughs> I have as much time as I need to fix that. Uh, well, listen, I I wanted to do something to to honor you at the at the university, and I was just wondering because you know, obviously I I know you as Amanda, but I, I know gnomes have have different names. Uh, would you would you would you want to be honored as as Amanda, or is there another name that you prefer that I use? Well, the whole point of the school is to reach out to non gnomes. That's the whole point of the two names I gave you, Amanda Hug and Kiss. Now, uh, I wouldn't want you to name the whole school after that. I mean. Uh, no, I think there are others who would probably disapprove of that. Well, it's just that, you know, I you got to use a name. Yeah, you got to use a good old-fashioned gnomish joke for the name of a good bardic college. Mm. Any ideas? Well, let me get up Google Translate here. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was waiting for something to break the immersion of this. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, Bobbin has some great ways of killing the immersion, but in, the, in hilarious ways. Like when we were meeting the fucking frog people, and all of a sudden we hear, we hear, hi <laughs> Oh, I remember that. Kermit talking about mating. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
That was a good fucking time. It was a really <laughs> good time. <laughs> <laughs> this entire campaign rules. Yeah. Uh. That's why I'm kind of annoyed with myself. I missed it for three weeks. <laughs> That couldn't be helped, unfortunately. Yeah, it's fine. You missed the five-story orphanage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, where I just threw children into the kitty hole to get them to safety. <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. Well, if you're going to name it anything, how about Kaskinbroga? That should be relatively easy for normal... For them, uh, humans to pronounce. All right. <clears throat> I assume Aurelia. I mean, it was a gnomish thing, presumably Aurelia. Would yeah. Understand. Uh, Aurelia would understand that this means, uh, depending on who you ask, uh, frog barrel or frog ass. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, <laughs> I feel like Aurelia would would want to spend a bit more time catching up with Amanda, but I think that's the only thing I would want to do in character. Yeah, and uh, she will invite you to stay at her cottage for the evening. Where most most of you have to just sort of hunch down to avoid sticking your head up through the thatch. But aside I from that, I'm doing great. <laughs> The one good thing about gnomes is that they're about the same size. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but aside from that one glitch, you have a lovely evening with Amanda. And, uh... Yeah, basically the sense you get from Biotopia is that this is where Amish go when they die. Everybody is just a bit independent, but part of a working community. Everybody has a job that they love to do. And uh, even the merchants around here are, they love, they become merchants because they, they're people persons and they love the game of haggling. Hmm. And aside from that, yeah, pretty much everybody, uh, everybody who does business knows the face and personality of the person they do biz people they do business with. I have to say, this encounter is now, you know, raising questions about whether it'll be possible to find other dead people. Well, she expl <clears throat> Well, Amanda explains that. Uh, yeah, you guys are famous, and uh, the march is famous, and uh, she also mentions that the um, the gnomish uh, golden hills, like the heart of the traditional gnomish pantheon, and she emphasizes traditional. You know. Uh, makes its home there, and uh, apparently the march was heading in their direction, and so they picked up the hills and moved them out of the way and put them back down. <laughs> so it's they're effective. smarter than the people in the, <laughs> the previous... Yeah. Well, they had a couple of planes worth of warning, so yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the other guys had uh, 256 years worth of warning, and that didn't seem to help them. Yes, this is this is great, Kalon. Just nobody that Lee gives a shit about is dead. Yeah. Great. Wait, was Lake's mom evil? No, I just thought it would be. It was just a joke that I'm putting through. That for some reason she's in in hell and like would have no idea why. Wait, where do neutral people go when they die? The Outlands. 
Oh, okay. So you can end up there. All right. Yeah, and as Lorm has mentioned, I'm not sure during a session or not, but he will have mentioned that supposedly there is a realm that supposedly the Outlands stretch far beyond the gate towns in all directions. And uh, that area is where the desert atmosphere gives way to actual life. And that is where most of the petitioners who are true neutral end up. Hmm. Of course, now I'm wondering what the logistics of how there can be enough space for all these people. I mean, magic is the obvious answer, but like... Everything is infinite until it isn't. Right. That's, that's the great part. Damn. I mean, technically, even the material plane is infinite. It's just that... Eh? Well, the bits of it that people live on are not. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, the outer planes are just straight up metaphysical. Just every point is the center, and also it's infinite. In any case, it has been uh, two and a half hours, so... Yeah, fair enough. Although, to be fair, the thing that I'm supposed to be doing hasn't uh, actually started yet. The other person has not shown up, so... Well, yeah, but to be um, fair, but this is a good. Oh yeah, no, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm happy to to stop. I just want to let you know I wasn't in a rush. If there was anything more you wanted to say or whatever. Well, there is uh, something more we can do uh, if you're going to be sticking around. Well, I I don't know for how long because as soon as the person shows up, I will have to leave. So. All right, but uh, this this is just going to be another quiet thing. So okay. rather than the next part of the actual march adventure. It's just that the next place you end up going into is Elysium. Uh. Without having to dodge into a gate town because you're you're on the outer side of the sewing metaphor. Mm -hmm. But in Elysium, the world is just sort of a wild but plentiful and peaceful place. Uh, the... So this is where fucking Lake would love to be. Yeah, actually. Goddamn tree fucker! <laughs> is uh, from what you've under from what you understand from what Lorm is able to tell you, having come in, having come with you, Elysium is a place where anybody can do whatever they want. Like even in Bytopia, there was a, something of a restriction where you needed to come up with a job for yourself. Here, you don't even need that. You can work hard if you want. You can be lazy if you want. You can live out in the wilderness on the ample fruits of nature, or you can live in a city and uh, spend your days socializing with other humanoids, with other intelligent life. You can spend it's... a century like hanging around the city, then go fuck off in the woods for another century, do nothing but smoke weed. It's paradise. Yeah. Sounds great. Shame I'm not going there. <laughs> yeah, the one real restriction here is um, we'll do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Live and let live. Whoops the doodle. <laughs> <laughs> really uh, screwed the pooch on that one. Yeah, you should have been good aligned. <laughs> no. Yeah, the, uh... <clears throat> the secret here is to just never die. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, the other thing about this plane is that... Uh, you know, if you do start some trouble, they come down on you hard. Like, there are a bunch of animal-headed people wandering around whom Lorm identifies as the Gardinals. They are basically the angel natives of Elysium. All I'm thinking is just a regular person, but with, like, a bird-ass head? Yes. It's Egypt, Egyptian, like okay, that. Okay, so Gardinal is both a play on words and a pun. Got it. Hmm. And uh, one other thing Laura mentions is that the speed at which you travel through Elysium entirely depends on you. Because uh, what you have to do is set yourself a destination in your mind and choose a path. Any path will do. 
And then if you see people in trouble on that path, help them out. If you do help them out, then your destination will be a few hours or days ahead. If you don't help them out, your journey can stretch into months or years. <laughs> And it is during your travels that uh, you see this one person, a uh, bit hard to determine gender, sort of in that in-between space. But uh, they uh, walk up uh, to your group as you are um, wandering towards the next gate town. Uh, just seemingly to uh, join your path through a fork in the road. And uh, when they see you, they smile and say, well, isn't it great that I chose to take a walk out today? I just knew I would find someone new. Hello, strangers. Don't hey. make eye contact. Oh, oh, hey, it's great. Hi, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Oh, it's wonderful. And then always tends to be wonderful around here. So what brings uh, such fine folks as yourselves to the great plains of Elysium? Uh, we're with the Modrons. Well, with is a strong word. Yeah. We're oh. following the Modrons. Modron chasers. I understand that there's uh, quite a collection building up these days. They're quite the fascinating folks. And this doesn't come around every day, even in the Outer Plains. And yeah, it's every 256 years. Is there any reason in particular you've decided to follow them? Because it's cool. Uh, uh, well, it's it's a bit complicated. We've Because um, it's cool. We need to meet their leader, I guess, uh, as part of a quest. You know, when you say it out loud, it sounds kind of weird. Well, cool. I've certainly heard weirder. Probably sure you have, yeah. I'm always glad to hear a new story from a new face. Say, has anyone told you about the factions of the uh, Outer Plains? Uh, Doesn't sound sure. familiar. No. Oh. Well, I was just thinking about them earlier today, so I figured I would bring them up. It seemed like the right thing to do. Like the right moment. Of course, uh, that tends to be how life flows for me. I'm part of the Transcendent Order. Uh, what we do is we believe that, well, everything is a part of the grander whole, you know? And if you can shut your mind, get rid of all the distractions that plague you, and listen to the multiverse around you, then you will know what to do next. Yeah, you know that bit you said about getting lost in the woods and smoking weed? <laughs> <laughs> Why, that sounds like a fun way to pass the time. I mean... But I like to help people, and so... I can't just spend my whole eternity just helping myself, you know? That's why I listen to the multiverse. So how much do you know about the other planes, or how about the other factions around there? Uh, basically next to nothing. We're kind of oh. new. No wonder I was thinking about them earlier today. Well, the, the simple way of putting it is that uh, there's about 16 factions or so. It's, Sometimes they're called sects, and sometimes they're called factions, and sometimes they get bigger, and sometimes they get smaller, combine together, break apart. It's all a mess, really. But what's important is that they all believe in something. And maybe it's a bit too much to just uh, lay them all out for you, so let me just ask you, what do you believe in? I mean, 
How do you believe the multiverse should work? That is a question I've never really <laughs> thought of the answer to. Uh, well, you're in a great place to ask. However it goddamn pleases. I do not think to ask. At times, I just let the wind guide me. Yeah, like, I just, I just kind of go and trying to help improve people's lives as I do. Well, that sounds pretty transcendent to me. That's our goal, you know? Just let life happen and let us do our best to listen to it and find out how we can help. I mean, honestly, I I think you guys sound pretty cool, but I'm not sure about my friend here, and I sort of, like, nod towards Lily. Well, everybody's welcome to have their own opinions. Yeah. That's what's so wonderful about having all, all these factions. So what was that you said? Just let the universe run as it will? Yeah, me? Yeah, however goddamn pleases. Well, there's a faction for that, too. It's called the Free League. Sounds... Dumb. <laughs> well, the idea of the Free League is that everyone is independent and everyone is free to choose their own path and to hell with anyone who tells them what to do. Shit, shit. <laughs> Why? You said it sounds dumb, but now they sound really kind of cool? You wouldn't know what cool is even if it hit you upside the head. <laughs> so that's a yes, then. Got it. My name is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to call yourself something different, then you're free to do that, too. Yeah. I admit the Transcendent Order doesn't really have much of a hierarchy. It's oh, that more about cool. it's more about listening to the universe and learning to understand what it's saying. And getting incredibly high. Sometimes. I'm liking this the more I see or <laughs> hear it. Yeah, the Free League is just made up of people who are sick of all the other factions and want to be left alone. Sometimes they're called the in the Indeps or the Independents, too. Lily is just trying to just ignore him now. <laughs> How about you? you? You've been fairly quiet. Nods towards Aurelia. Well, I guess maybe these days I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. I mean, I, I know what I believe in, but, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm less sure of some things than I used to be. That can happen. And, uh, yeah. Of all the factions out there, I think the faction of figuring out which faction you belong to is not one of them. But then there are a few that are based around seeking answers. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, one called the Mind's Eye. It, uh, formed out of a couple of other factions a while back, back when there was a big hubbub going on. But, uh, they call themselves the Seekers, or the Visionaries. And their whole goal is to see the multiverse around them as, uh, a test. A way to improve themselves day by day. Hmm. Well, I can't say that's necessarily how I feel. Well, it's an option. 
it's always there's always options and the point of choosing a faction by the way is that uh, it allows you to find like-minded people and maybe get some resources when you're in need it is certainly something to consider however i think in aurelia's case there's a source of personal conflict there that is best not inquired by by many people. Yes. Do part of our friend. It is just a lot to take in, and it is very clearly taking time to come to terms with. Well, it's all a part of your journey, you know? Hmm. And at least when you're in the transcendent order, that journey is uh, all part of the bigger picture. I think this conversation has run its course, and so has my uh, prep work for this week. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. So, yes, you have an opportunity to join a faction and possibly gain some actual um, like mechanical benefits from doing so honestly like is kind of digging the transcendent order the high hermits <laughs> pretty much yeah well uh their their nickname is actually the ciphers high hermits <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, yeah if, if they're if they're offering lake is down to join i mean it's very obvious what Lily feels. <laughs> free League? <laughs> yes. The Free League, but also, please, for the love of God, change your name to something less dumb. Please. It's so <laughs> stupid. Well, that's the fun part about the Free League. You can. <laughs> yes. However, the uh, benefit you get will be marked with Free League. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Scribble that into one corner of your sheet or something. I'll... None of this has been tr none of this has been brought forward in the fifth edition. So I will be coming up with a small but notable benefit to if you choose to join a faction. And uh, Aurelia is still up in the air. But what does Grunash think? I can list off some others if you are curious. Yeah, I think that's something I'll take a list for at some point and figure out which one would work for Grunash, which one would take his attention. So it would be one that's dedicated to maintaining order or some shit. Maybe. There's a few of those. Wow, color me shock. <laughs> <laughs> right, it, it depends really on how they're angled. Like, if there's one that absolutely appeals to him, he would... He would well, not question it, but... You might like the Sons of Mercy. That, uh... They believe in um, protecting the greater good even against the law, if necessary. And uh, the best way to promote good is by living as an example and helping individuals reform. So the and, most neutral fucking good. But while noble, a gentle approach isn't always an effective one, and this has earned them a reputation as idealistic fumblers. <laughs> they're, actually, they're actually based out of Bytopia, so a bit more law than good. I mean, that does seem fairly spot on, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Well-meaning fumblers. I mean, that too! It's, it's in some cases, point, yeah. yeah. 
Well, that's good news because uh, they it used to be that they were combined with another faction as the Mercy Killers. It wasn't really a good matchup because the point of being a Mercy Killer was to kill Mercy. Yeah, nah. But they're dead now, so don't worry about it. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the, the, the Mercy Killers um, during the big faction war got divided into the Sons of Mercy, who are actually good and reformers, and the Sod Killers, who believe that uh, if there's a problem, then you haven't killed it hard enough yet. Hmm. I know you can't see it, but I'm just shaking my head. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the Sod Killers are based out of Acheron, the more lawful than evil plane. The uh, Acheron is notable for being a permanent war zone. So, what was that one again? The Sons of Mercy. Presumably daughters as well. Yeah, I was about Presumably. to say the name is a bit sexist. <laughs> okay. Stuck it down on the uh, quest notes, so. Yeah, I, I wrote mine down in features, because I know there's going to be. I wrote it in the notes section of my sheet. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I will be getting to you individually too tell you what mechanical benefit you get for simply believing in the faction without necessarily joining it. Well, alrighty. Alright. Also, I fucking hate that every time we, we mention the leader of Mechanus, just knowing his name, I end up thinking about Winona's big brown beaver. <laughs> Primus? Yeah, Primus. I thought that was a band name. It is a band name! Uh, when he owns Big Brown Beavers, one of their songs. Ah, okay. Anyway, I think I'm going to stop the recording now. <laughs> That's fair.